Sure, there is some value in doing this exercise, but there are much better ways to train the triceps. So me, personally, I would rather spend my time focusing on those. Yo, what's a crack? Your personal trainer T talks, changing people's lives for the better through strength and fitness. It is common knowledge in the fitness world that not all exercises are created equal. Very selected few have been granted the status of staples when it comes to strength and hypertrophy training. These are compound heavy hitters that present significant overloading potential. It is not surprising that advanced lifters with significant muscle mass and impressive strength numbers have based their careers mostly on a basket of top tier movements. They've learned over the years that these ought to be the meat and potatoes of every good program. The importance of the second tier movements cannot be understated though. Smaller exercises are key when it comes to achieving optimal results, a well-rounded physique, managing fatigue over time, and avoiding weak body parts. That's why intelligent lifters include some of these into their training to make sure that they get strong from head to toe. However, one particular exercise among these have gained unwarranted popularity in the last few decades. I'm talking about the tricep kickback, and look, I do agree that there is no such a thing as a bad exercise. This isn't a bad exercise per se. But as you're about to see, I'm gonna make the case for ditching this movement and replace it with more effective ones. Your time in the gym is valuable. Use it wisely. In this video, I'm going to explain why tricep kickbacks are popular nowadays, why you're better off not doing them with a set of dumbbells, I'm also going to show a better way to perform tricep kickbacks, and finally, I'm going to suggest more effective alternatives. Let's get on with it. One of the reasons why tricep kickbacks are so popular in commercial gyms these days is because this is an easy exercise. Either unconsciously or fully aware, the vast majority of people seek to get results using the least amount of time and effort. This human trait could be a bless and a curse at the same time. That's why millions of people find extremely appealing those who promise the results they want through easy methods is press. This is for triceps. Good. But if you have a minimum knowledge and understanding of human physiology, you know that this is a massive and steaming pile of major league horse <laughs> to tone, sculpt, define, or whatever marketing lingo influencers want to use to connect with their audience, your triceps need to get bigger. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, I would like to order a new set of triceps if that's available. Yeah. Perfect. Bigger? No, 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 I don't want to grow them. I just want to tone them. That's it. Only that. Thank you, please. For a given muscle group to get defined, sculpted, or even toned, you have to make it bigger first so that it's pushed against your skin. That, in combination with losing body fat all around your body because you put yourself through a caloric deficit for an X amount of time, will make your triceps look more visible, giving you the so-called toning effect that you're looking for. Something died inside of me after using the word toning more than three times in a minute. Still trying to get back from it. So if muscle growth is a non-negotiable requirement to accomplish the type of results most people actually want, why don't fitness people discuss the need to consistently and progressively overload elbow extension with a variety of movements, as well as the need to perform these with an intensity of effort to make them effective, aka proximity to failure. I'm gonna tell you why. Because you just turn something that it was previously presented as easy into something that is supposed to be hard. La La Land versus the harsh and uncomfortable truth of the real world where you have to bust your ass to get results. And this leads me to the one question we have to answer. Why are tricep kickbacks so easy? This has to do with the strength curve of the exercise. For you to overcome a resistance, you need to create a superior force in the opposite direction. When using free weight or your own body weight, the direction of the resistance is the same as the direction of gravity. During the squat or a dip, the force they have to produce runs opposite to the force of gravity throughout the set. In other words, the resistance remains consistent. This is not the case during tricep kickbacks the position of the body doesn't allow for this to happen. It's only at the top that you have to create a force in direct opposition to the resistance, 
when the arm is fully extended. This is the only point of maximal force production, which is not much time during the set if you ask me. Instead, you spend most of the set confronted with lighter loads because you're essentially shrinking the dumbbell into smaller dumbbells and all the way down to thin air. Nothing. Nada. No! God, please, no! No! In fact, the lifter does not produce any force at the bottom. You could literally spend all day long here because the triceps don't have to work at all. Only your grip. The biggest drawback, in my opinion, is that you can't present any loading demand to the triceps when it's at a 90 degree angle, which is where you are mechanically the strongest. Muscles have the lowest potential to generate force when they are either fully elongated or fully shortened. Additionally, there is another element that makes this exercise an inefficient choice with regards to triceps development – range of motion. You never get to train the triceps where they are lengthened the most, aka at maximal elbow flexion. If you did so when performing the commercial gym version, you wouldn't be targeting your triceps, but your biceps. I mean, are you kidding me? So, as you can clearly see, this movement desperately needs an overhaul. If a pair of dumbbells is all you've got at your disposal, then you've got to change your body angle to make your line of force against the object as directly opposed to the line of gravity as possible. For this to happen, you must produce an excessive bent over. Let's call this variant the upside down tricep kickback. Believe it or not, this version was an old bodybuilding movement that never went mainstream. As weird as this looks, this is a much more productive way to spend your time training your triceps. You finally overload elbow extension at 90 degrees and your arm is not fully extended when the line of the resistance is perpendicular to the ground. In simple terms, this excessive bent over creates a new angle that works much better with gravity to train thus to grow the triceps muscle group. Additionally, there is an incremental loading near maximal elbow flexion, which is something that never happens during the commercial version. If you have access to the right equipment, you won't have to assume this awkward looking upside down position. It's possible to do a more effective version of the tricep kickback with a more comfortable torso angle with a cable machine. Something that would make the exercise a superior choice to the version with dumbbells. This piece of equipment helps the resistance stay consistent throughout the entire range of motion which means that we solve the problem of massive loading fluctuation. If you have a real thing for tricep kickbacks, both the upside down and the machine cable variant will give you a much better bang for your buck than the commercial version. There is still some value in doing this exercise, don't get me wrong, you will certainly get stronger at the lockout during tricep kickbacks. But I'd rather spend my time focusing on movements that are better suited to work against gravity. Which brings me to the next point. What alternatives can I use to ensure triceps development? Here I'm going to give you some exercises that are worth your while. Tricep pushdowns or behind the neck extensions are great movements to have in your arsenal. These two are pretty straightforward in terms of execution and overloading is also pretty self-explanatory. You want to go heavier? Put the stick one hole below and come back for more. The first one favors the lateral and the medial head of the triceps. Whereas the second one targets all three heads, including the long head, even the overhead position of your arms. If you have dumbbells, the skull crushers will never let you down. Whatever version you prefer, either backward lean, arm constantly perpendicular to the ground, or dynamic, skull crushers do a great job at adding needs to all heads of the triceratops. Aside from minor technique differences, body angle is also a variable worth taking a look at to ensure that you emphasize different sections in the strength curve. A little caveat, these are hard. That's why so few people choose these at commercial gyms over the mainstream kickback. If you typically train calisthenics, then it's impossible to go wrong with ring tricep extensions. You can build impressive horseshoe triceps using your own body weight as resistance. But I'm not gonna lie, the technical requirement is much higher than the previous movements I've discussed. You're basically combining skull crushers with an up wheel rollout, so the midsection might give up before the triceps do if your core isn't strong enough. If you want to find out more on this exercise, form, variations, and typical mistakes to avoid, I recommend catching this video later on. And lastly, the JM Press. 
Popular in powerlifting circles, the JM Press has been adding mass to triceps for many decades now. If this exercise feels good to you and causes you no pain at all, the JM Press could be a game changer. I highly recommend this accessory lift, especially if you want to build a bigger bench press. It might take a couple of training sessions to get the hang of it, but boy oh boy, this is one of those movements that is very overlooked in the bodybuilding world. It shouldn't. It's known for blowing up your triceps pretty good. In sum, the commercial tricep kickback is not a bad exercise in the sense that it would hurt you or it would be a complete waste of your time. In fact, there is some value to it, albeit limited. But given its unique characteristics, in terms of its interaction with gravity, you must place this exercise towards the lower end of a hypothetical value scale. If that's all you do to grow your triceps, uh, your results might not be what you expected. I don't have a problem with this movement in isolation. However, I do take issue when trainees want to rely entirely on the commercial kickback to spur growth in the triceps area. Hopefully, I made it very clear throughout this video that tricep kickbacks in the way we practice it in commercial gyms are not the best way to try to get triceps growth. What's more, I also address the shortcomings of the popular variant and what changes to introduce in order to turn it into a better movement. Moreover, I have offered you other alternatives that could help you grow bigger triceps more effectively. Rotating some of these in and out of your training could be a smart way to supplement multi-joint exercises. Check out these two videos, I think you're gonna like them. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click on the bell to get notified every time a new video goes live. Stay fit, stay strong, peace.